Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Explanation Point. And today we have got the Fascist Soccer Show. I think this is about Blue Lock. I've not actually watched Blue Lock myself. Heard some good things about it. Uh, but, um, yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just get into it. The Fascist Soccer Show. Sports anime follow a very simple formula. Pick a sport. Find a character who has a complicated to edgy relationship with that sport yes. who looks like a stretched out blueberry. Pair him up with a sentient caffeine molecule with spiky orange hair and a smile straight out of assassination classroom. Aww. Then spend four or five seasons watching them work with each other and the rest of their team to rise through the ranks of sport while honing their skills, strengthening their friendships, and growing as people. Now that is that is pretty much the uh the gist of sports anime. Yes, okay, right, okay. Now, take <laughs> all of the parts of that formula that sound happy or fun or <laughs> hopeful in oh, any okay. way and hit them in the face with a high-speed sphere. This is Blue Lock, right. the soccer-themed shonen battle anime where everyone sucks and the points are the only thing that matters. Coming in at 589,000 viewers on Mal at the time of this recording, it would have been the most popular original anime of the Fall 22 season if not for... Chainsaw Man. I mean, what a thing to compete with. God damn. It asks a very important question. What if sports anime, but morally bad? What if every character were an egotistical douche-ass, hell-bent on proving that they're sport king and that everyone else is lowly sport peasant, unworthy even of eating sport dirt? And what if the whole thing- mm, mm, Gotta love that sport dirt flavor. <laughs> ...were dripping with highly uncomfortable fascist overtones to the point where they stop being overtones and start just being the music? Well, then we would have Blue Luck, which I am affectionately but accurately calling the fascist song. Show. Okay. I am aware that fascist is a word that breaks down discussions. It seems that no government or person or piece of media can be accused of having fascist tendencies unless they are actively killing people for racist reasons right now and, you know, sometimes even if they are. So just to be clear on what I'm talking about when I say that Blue Lock is fascist, I do not mean that the manga itself is real-world fascist propaganda. I don't think it's great, ethically, but God knows it's not worse than, like, Rising of the Shield Hero or Mushku Tensei. <sighs> I also do not mean that Muneyuki Kaneshiro, the author, is a fascist, or that you are a fascist for liking it. What I mean mostly is that Jinpachi Igo, the director of the Blue Lock program within the manga, uses techniques that are commonly associated with fascist propaganda to frighten the listless and insecure young men in his thrall to- What a neck. What a- what a neck. <laughs> sacrifice their lives and bodies for the advancement of his own goals, all under the guise of patriotism and self-improvement. As an outline and overview of different fascist propaganda techniques, I will be using the book How Fascism Works, The Politics of Us and Them hmm. by Jason Stanley. It okay. is a direct and accessible overview of the various methods that fascists have been using to ensnare people for more than a century. As I go over these points, though, keep in mind that fascism is a real political ideology that is designed to work in the real world, and that this is a video about a cartoon about soccer. The yes, it's uh, very fictitious. The rhetoric used to manipulate real-life Nazis is not going to line up one-to-one -one with the rhetoric used by Jinpachi Ego to manipulate <laughs> fictional high school ball hogs. Yes. But there are enough similarities and direct comparisons that I felt like this video should be made, so I made it. And without further ado, here we go. The cornerstone of fascist propaganda is the creation of what Stanley calls the mythic past. The good old days when men were men, when our country was great, when Grr. women shut their mouths and that lazy minority we hate either knew their place or didn't exist. God, Naturally, time those times were not actually all that great, especially if you were not male or part of the majority mm -hmm. ethnic or religious group, but that does not matter. The lie is what matters. The lie of some glorious age where everyone who is like you lived like a king, where you were respected just for existing, where women listened to you and you could get a job without any of that pesky school learning. Unlike now, when greedy liberals have thrown the economy in the toilet and women and gays and racial minorities are all chipping away at your hard-earned rights and making life harder for you day by miserable day. The past was better. The past was golden. And we can get there again. Right away we hit a snag. Japan might have many time periods that a traditional fascist could point to and call the good old days, but they certainly do not have some long-lost age of soccer supremacy. And since every person who's participating in Blue Lock is presumably a huge soccer fan, they would know that. The yeah. Mm. Closest we get to hearkening back to a lost age of soccer is this clip. Don't you know, soccer was originally all about scoring. Over the years, you've been imprinted with stupid notions regarding positioning and tactics on the field. But all of the different roles evolved gradually. Soccer initially started out... 
There's this guy on the end here, that's funny. <laughs> Everyone acting as a striker. So play the game as it was intended. Here, Ego argues that all this talk about positioning and strategy and defending that we get in modern day soccer is just woke bull hockey, or bull soccer. His goal of creating the ultimate striker is how the game was meant to be played. It okay. <laughs> No, this defense rubbish. Let's just go for the attack. It's ah. the way of tradition from back when cavemen were cavemen. But as is consistent with the mythic part of mythic past, this seems to be false. I am no soccer historian. I did a little bit of research just for this point, but I'm not going to read an entire book on the history of soccer just for one paragraph in yeah, this is just, yeah. one video, so if I'm wrong, <laughs> forgive me. But I found nothing that suggests that this is in any way true. People have understood the importance of having a goalie, at least, for as long as we have been trying to kick balls into nets. And the earliest form of organized soccer, British Association Football, prominently features what Wikipedia calls the 1-2-7 formation, with one keeper, one defender, two midfielders, and seven forwards. Still very aggressive, Jesus. but not 11 <laughs> forwards aggressive. The fact that this is a lie doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh, that's it. The fascist actually finds it preferable for reasons that we'll get into later. The important thing is that it grounds future fascist rhetoric in the mooring of tradition. But even though the idea of the mythic past doesn't line up one to one with Blue Lock's propaganda, there is an important element of it that does show up very frequently, and that is the glorification of the patriarchal family. Fascism relies on the creation of in groups and out groups. In groups can consist of any number of factors. They are Buddhists in Myanmar, Hutus in Rwanda, Muslims in Turkey. But okay. regardless of the ethnic or religious divisions that the fascist chooses to exploit, Stanley cites that there is always one factor that is consistent across all fascist social propaganda. The glorification of the traditional nuclear family with the father as the leader. Every single mythic past in every fascist movement ever harkens back to a time when the capital F father was at the head of the family where he belongs. Respected by his heterosexual and monogamous wife yes. who cleans his house and bears his children and never complains or votes. His word is law, his whim unchallenged. Fascism puts a huge emphasis on the idea of the strong leader who acts unilaterally without input from any of the know-nothing yuppies who will water down his decisions and gum up the works for everyone. And this idea is firmly present in Blue Lock. We just replace family with team and father with striker. What we need is a solitary hero. All it takes is one outstanding player to create a spiral of rivalry. Soccer exists exclusively for strikers. Wow. <laughs> Fascist propaganda chooses its target demographic very carefully, and that demographic is always, primarily, young men. There is a reason this show is not about women's soccer. Cisgender men of the majority racial and religious group are the only people who stand to lose anything at all from growing social equality, and the anxiety caused by those perceived and actual attacks to their superior social position can cause a lot of issues for people who are used to being on top. Fascist systems allegedly seek to restore a natural hierarchy. It is a might-makes-right system of governance, okay. wherein the strongest and most effective leader should have the right to lead. In Blue Lock, that leader is the striker. Whether it is Baro kicking his team into shape in the first selection, or Isagi making zero into one, or Rin Itoshi being himself. As someone who admittedly knows nothing about soccer, football. Even I am aware that striking is an essential part of any winning strategy. But from what I understand, the important thing is not the striker, but the strike. Sure, soccer teams exist to score goals, and the striker does the scoring, but Blue Lock treats the striker like the only important member of the team. Yeah, like, you've got your defenders, you've got obviously the goalkeeper was mentioned, your defenders, your midfield, and your strikers. And your strikers are the ones that are meant to be there to score the goals, Primate mainly, uh, and then midfield, yeah. I'm trying to pretend I know football. <laughs> Arguing even that they should prioritize their own glory and desires over winning the game. The first scene of the show is Isagi playing in his high school's championship game, ready to score the game-winning point, but his shot is unclear. He has a teammate who is completely open, so he makes the obvious move and passes the ball. Ego brings up this exact situation before saying that it would take an insane egoist to make that shot instead of passing, which is, of course, true, because making that shot yourself when your teammate is open is the wrong move 
move mm -hmm. if your goal is to win the game. It is only the right move if your goal is to mitigate your own insecurities and make yourself feel like a super, super special boy who can impose his will on the world without exposing himself to all of the necessary vulnerabilities that crop up when you rely on other people. But this seems to be what Blue Lock the show wants. Characters are frequently rewarded for making moves that are flashy and selfish even at the expense of what is strategically correct. Hmm. In the game of tag, Isagi never should have touched the ball when Bachira passed it to him. Bachira's hubris would have gotten him eliminated and Isagi would have been safe. It wouldn't even have contradicted the themes of the series because Bachira would have been punished for putting his trust in Isagi instead of trying to break Kira's jaw himself. It I feel like I should have watched this anime before watching this, but never mind. <laughs> in the first selection, Team V should have thrown the match against Team Z. Their record meant that they were going to advance to the second selection regardless of whether they won or lost. So they effectively got to choose whether Team Z or Team X advanced with them. Since Team X has a better record than Team Z and are therefore ostensibly better soccer players, it makes more sense to make sure that Team Z advances so that Team V has less competition in the future. Mm, okay. But the important thing in Blue Lock is not winning the game or having the best record. It's feeling better, being better than other people. And that is a classic hallmark of fascist ideology, hmm. the creation of hierarchy. Fascists believe that some people are better, better than, than others, other people. Yeah. Rich people are better than poor people. Straights are better than gays. Able-bodied people are better than disabled people. And the people who are lesser should not be able to infringe upon the happiness of their betters by demanding equal treatment under the law and fighting against social discrimination. Oh, Fascism <laughs> does not work without this hierarchy. It's like like that quote from President Johnson about the lowest white man and the best colored man, his words not mine. The creation of hierarchy does two important things. First, it makes the people who have benefited most from the current social order feel like other people rising to their level is an attack on their own comforts, which gives them impetus to fight back against growing social equality. And second, the resulting social division makes it easy for the fascist ruling class to exploit an entire population without worrying about blowback from either their base or their victims because because both of these groups are too busy fighting each other to work together against the real enemy that mm. they both share. There are two levels of hierarchy in Blue Lock, the implicit hierarchy and the explicit one. Explicitly, Ego uses his own arbitrary and biased reasoning to rank each of the participants out of 300. This is a very normal thing for a Shonen Battle series to do. But it is, yes it is. But oh boy, it does not feel good in this show. Oh. That explicit numbered ranking gives each participant in Blue Lock one important thing, a feeling of fear. In How Fascism Works, Stanley states that one of Hitler's goals for his propaganda machine was to replace reasoned political debate with fear and passion. On the same page, he quotes American fascist ideologue Steve Bannon as saying, quote, We got elected on pure anger. Anger and fear is what gets people to the polls, oh, okay. unquote. Having that number on your arm lets each character know exactly where they stand in Blue Lock's hierarchy. Anger comes from knowing how inferior you are compared to other people and oh. how far you have left to go. Yes, we do see Isagi calmly assessing his talents and making rational decisions about what he has to do to improve his abilities as a striker. But only after we see... <laughs> that. Fear comes from knowing how many people below them are gunning for their position and what happens if they get it. Isagi and Igarashi actually have this conversation in episode 8, where they discuss how fear makes them grow stronger and keeps them fighting, which just shows how well they have been manipulated into oh. believing that they are bettering themselves when actually they are only working to further Ego's own personal goals. Right, but the hierarchy at Blue Lock comes with benefits. Points mean prizes. Better food, better facilities, higher oh ranked God, players really? get stamina Jesus training Christ. instead instead of having to participate in the first selection. If you have enough goal points, you can purchase a bed instead of having to sleep on a mat on the floor. This is mental, what? These are not arbitrary rewards. They are things that give a tangible advantage to people who are already at the top and a disadvantage yeah. to people who are at the bottom, which is a cornerstone of the right wing. It takes the hierarchy that already exists at Blue Lock and makes it self-enforcing. The people with a lower Blue Lock ranking are not just worse at soccer than the people with a higher one. They are also tired, hungry, overworked, undernourished, and constantly paranoid from having to fight for their lives. This is how fascism creates 
creates social inequality. It takes people who are already at a disadvantage due to generations of ingrained societal said, oppression, yeah. then implements policies to make it even more difficult for them to get a job, become educated, and generally advance up the social ladder. Then, when they have had every legitimate means of participating in society taken from them, the fascists can point to this newly created group of criminals and vagabonds and say, Lo, this is the enemy of the good, hard-working Christian man. See how lazy and corrupt they are, purely Damn. by their own nature, and not at all because we personally rigged the game. Yeah, it's not like we put them there, you know? Hmm. ...in such a way that makes it impossible for them to succeed. Ooh, it's a cartoon about soccer. But even oh, number 300 works. needs to feel like he's better than someone, and Ego has given him the perfect target in the form of Average Joe. Average Joe is Blue Lock's fascist outgroup. They are the scapegoat and the straw man who exhibits all of the qualities that a good, motherland-loving soccer superstar should hate. Average Joe is lazy. Average Joe does not learn from his mistakes. Average Joe cares more about chasing his dream... <laughs> than achieving God, Megalobox is so good. it. Particularly in his manic monologue about the importance of defeat in episode 18, Ego's talk about the average soccer player mirrors the vital fascist stereotype of the other as lazy and unambitious. Back at least as far as Mussolini and likely even further, fascist rhetoric has valorized the agrarian ideal. The archetype of the hard-working man of the countryside who, through the sweat of his own labors, creates and provides all the things his devoted family needs to continue making babies to pump into the nationalist war machine. While discussing this topic, Stanley you gotta love the way he presents his videos, man. It's like it's such a it's like a serious discussion, but the editing's just like got so many little hidden footy bones. Prince's Paul Ryan's 2012 American presidential campaign, where he repeatedly divided society into makers and takers. People who provide worth to society and therefore deserve the protections of it, and people who do nothing but benefit from the hard work of others. Blue Lock, the show and the program, puts an enormous emphasis on the idea of hard work and self-improvement. People who put in the effort are the ones who deserve to make it to the top. And if anyone doesn't succeed, it's because they didn't care enough, didn't work hard enough, weren't good enough. The strikers who hone their talents and develop their skills enough to succeed in Blue Lock are the makers. Everyone else is a lazy do-nothing. Worth mentioning here that Scum. Ego does not <laughs> recognize that there is such a thing as a circumstance that is outside a person's control. A classic right-wing talking point is that we live in a fair society where every Everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed. This lie allows adherents of fascist ideologies to play up the notion that people who are failing to put food on the table are doing so due to their own moral failings and not because of intentional political plays by bad faith actors seeking to create a social underclass for their base to ravenously shit upon. This point gets hammered home in episode 15 when we hear Naruhaya's backstory and see his siblings talk about rising out of poverty by investing in bluey coin. How many episodes are there? Is it two core then? Is it 24? Coin or Mary rich or just complaining. They are poor and unfortunate because they refuse to do real work to change their situation, instead relying on easy fixes that require no effort on their parts. The point is compounded by Ego's sketchy monologue about luck in episode 23, where he essentially says that if a bird shits on your head, it's your fault for walking under a bird. Mm. But we get this as far back as episode 2, where Ego criticizes Kira for getting his nose caved in with a soccer ball because he should have acted sooner to prevent it. Everything in blue Luck is under an individual's control. If you miss a goal, it's because you didn't aim well enough. Right. If you get swarmed with defenders, it's because you weren't fast enough. If your teammates drag you down, it's because you were not able to carry them. If your dream ends here, it's because you were not a good enough soccer player to survive. Damn. And this obsession with personal responsibility means that the players blame themselves when they lose the right to play for the Japanese national team. Not each other, and certainly not Ego, the man who put them in this position. It's the same logic that's used to trick people into supporting tax cuts for the wealthy while opposing national coverage of healthcare. The idea that people get what they earn, and if they can't afford something, it's because they didn't work hard enough to get it, not because there are people in power and systems in place that exist to exploit the vulnerable for their own benefit. And this is one of the few parts of Blue Lock's fascist rhetoric that is displayed in terms of actual, direct, real-world propaganda Locks instead news. of in terms of shonen battle soccer. Check this ridiculous mummery from episode 11. Let's take Noel Noah. He's currently considered the best striker in the world, but he grew up in a slum in France. Surrounded by crime and poverty, the only way to change his fate was with a ball. Soccer was literally the only chance he had to escape his predicament. Since you were all born and raised in Japan, where losing doesn't affect your life, the need to score and survival are not intertwined in your minds. 
Luckily, we have Blue Lock to help re-educate you. Because there Jesus. is no poverty in glorious Japan, I guess. You all sure are lucky you weren't born in one of those shithole countries where babies like can France. be poor, like France. <laughs> Nobody in Japan could ever be in that position, because we are a great nation. Not to mention the explicit criticism of Japan's collectivist socially wow. oriented mentality in episode 3 when Ego talks about how good the Japanese are at baseball, and sneers at the idea of glorifying people who work like dogs for the team, or that flashback with Chigiri where he mentions the dumb hierarchy of his high school soccer team not suiting his goals, which is a direct real-world attack on Japanese social structure in favor of individual aims, all of which is an extension of Ego's rhetoric, taking it from being couched in the universe of manga super soccer and instead putting it into the real world. Now, you might say that the slightest bit of critical thinking is enough to see through this obvious manipulation, and even if you were right, <coughs> Ego and other fascists have an answer to that the villainization of truth. Abandon what you once thought was common sense. Discard your common sense. Shove new concepts into those small brains of yours. Overwrite your consciousness. <laughs> because it is significantly harder to fight against an ideology when you don't have the intellectual framework and historical context to understand it, fascists make it a point <coughs> to vilify universities, public education, educated people, and even the concept of logic itself. This is why it's important that the mythic past is mythic. It is impossible to have reasoned debate about political policy when the debaters do not have a shared understanding of reality. So distorting that reality is a vital part of the fascist playbook. Promoting conspiracy theories, making contradictory me. statements with full confidence in each, outright lying about the state of the world. These are all tools that fascists use to distort their victim's sense of reality and make it harder to fight against them. This is why when you hear someone rail about how vaccines have tracking chips in them, you know nine times out of ten how they feel about affirmative action initiatives, mm. even when the two should have nothing to do with each other. Jimpachi Ego treats truth the same way. It is a tool to be used to manipulate those he seeks to warp into the perfect striker. He lies about everything. The existence of other blue lock buildings, the conditions being enjoyed by higher ranked players, the deception of quoting Messi, Ronaldo, and Cantona in the context of winning a World Cup when Cantona. none of them had done so. He even goes <laughs> as far as to say that the higher ups of the Japanese Japanese football union want Blue Lock shut down because it's a threat, when what they really said was that it was a stupid waste of money. When he gets called out for his lies, as he often does, his <laughs> justification is always that they get him the reaction that he wants. A reaction of fear and anger that results in young men clashing on a simulated battlefield. And if you think I am reaching to compare cartoon soccer to war, I'm not. Ego does it himself. Oh. This is, of course, the ultimate goal of fascist manipulation. A cadre of slavishly devoted young men who are willing to sacrifice their minds and bodies for the sake of some perceived greater good. The motherland, the political party, the future of our race, the glory of Japan on the world stage of soccer. And that's what Blue Lock is. That's how it works. People are going to watch this video and they're going to say, it's just a cartoon about soccer. <laughs> yeah. And it is. It's just a cartoon about soccer. But there is value in learning from me media, especially when the lessons are as important as these. I am not calling Kaneshiro, the author, a fascist. I am not calling you a fascist for enjoying Blue Lock as a fun shonen romp. But it is always worth examining popular media for the messages that it spreads. Media makes normalcy. There is a trend currently in anime that is moving away from a collectivist mentality toward an individualist one, and while that is not inherently bad, it is important that we recognize that it is happening and the terms in which it is expressed. We have to decide if we are going to learn from the individualist messages of ZOM 100 and refuse to be taken advantage of by exploitative companies who seek only to ruin our lives for their own profits, or if we are going to learn from Classroom of the Elite that helping other people is for schmucks. These are important important decisions, and they need to be conscious ones. Our influences make us who we are. Watch things wisely. This is a video that I worked very hard to make. I know it might not seem like it since it's coming out relatively soon after my last one, but I assure you that you underestimate how crippling my ADHD is and how much more productive I am now that it's medicated. For everyone who stuck with me through this process, a hearty thank you, especially to the lovely people who find my videos worthy of their financial support. If you would like... Very interesting. Not what I was expecting. Not as um, I tend to try and watch funny stuff. <laughs> now it had its moments, but it was very uh, on the serious side. So I'm sorry if you guys didn't. Find, yeah, I just uh, uh, I'm not very political, <laughs> but interesting non nonetheless. Thank you to my 
patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video and want to be able to watch patron-only reactions, such as solo leveling in the original Dragon Ball series, then link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all I ask for. Shout out greatly appreciate that guys for that. Thank you all for watching. You guys think of that. You guys think of this. Click like, subscribe if you haven't really. Leave comments down below. Let me know what I should watch and discuss in future videos. So you guys, all you guys, next time.